Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin from GreyFlorals.com and I am back with the Multi-Photo Monday Gals for a sketch and color theme inspiration this week. Um, if you guys have not checked this out before, I have um, great news for you. This is the best time to join because we have a bunch of guest designers joining us for this month to kick off the end of 2019. So for this process video, um, I have four photos as the sketch calls for and I have that in the top right for you guys. I know you suggested that the last time I had a sketch to work with so I have brought it to the videos and I hope you guys enjoy seeing it throughout the process. But we have four photos in the sketch. My photos end up being a bit larger than it seems what they call for but I have one four by six and then three three by fours um, and they're also not in the orientation that the photo suggests so I have all vertical photos so you'll see how I try to go through this process and kind of make it work despite the sketch not being the exact same thing that my photo should be. Since we have a blue themed uh, color mood board I figured I should use some of these Pink Fresh Studio papers that I have. Um, I end up using I think three out of the four of them because um, they are double-sided as well so that's good to note um, and that's a great way to use collections in new ways. Now these aren't super Christmassy papers, they're not super wintry um, but they do have like a snowflake sort of feel and I mean the dark navy definitely has the most impact but I end up going with the baby blue instead. And here I'm really trying to figure out what size triangle or what size rectangle they ended up using for the background layer there because um, I was really struggling to figure that out and then I just ended up cutting it down so it would show up on both sides of my photos um, and like I said I did cut down all of my photos so they'd fit better on the page and then I also have this cut apart sheet which has a bit of green in it so I do introduce some green through these cut aparts but this is from Simple Stories and I have one that's a journaling piece and then a couple I'll use as ephemera pieces and although I do bring in the green and that's not in the mood board um, I think it helps balance out the colors in my photos. And I apologize for my large sleeves. This I filmed this back when we had some really cold temps here. Um, and it was just frigid in the morning. Um, and I really, really uh, like wearing big sweaters. So I have really large sleeves. And they do move my things around quite a bit sometimes. So um, it's almost like a joke on myself that I wore this outfit for this process video. But I have several several different collections I could use for layering, but I end up pulling out this old DCWV holiday collection matte stack. I think it's from 2009. It's an oldie, but it's a goodie. Um, and there's so many blues in it that it works out beautifully. And the same thing with the cardstock. I got them at the same time for Christmas one year. Um, they're both from 2009. They have coordinating blue colors. I think this was also when DCWV used to release multiple um, holiday collection so they had a blue themed one they also had a traditional red and green themed one but luckily I have the blues to go with the theme of the mood board and then they can also cooperate well with the sketch so I just start picking out different pieces and I also pull out the cardstock here I opt for the darker one instead of the brighter one that I initially had because I thought the darker one matched the hat and the photo better and also the simple stories colors a little bit better and one of these papers um, there's a couple different designs on them that I end up using for my mats and I've sped this up quite a bit because I know it would be you know a little bit tedious to watch me you know just pick out a bunch of different papers um, but what I'm really looking for is not so much pattern or style but more so color difference um, so I'm trying to go from like light to dark to light or vice versa depending on where the photo rests on the main layout so if it rested on top of the like the middle one rests on top of the blue piece on the background so I want something a little bit darker as the final border whereas the top and bottom ones hit that dark blue cardstock layer so I want something a little bit brighter on the edges so it contrasts. So here I'm referencing my sketch again. I need to figure out a title and where I can fit that. Um, the sketch calls it for the top right. I don't end up having enough room for my title up there so I end up putting it um, lower than that. And here's where I get a little piece of ephemera from those cut aparts. I end up cutting out this mitten. And I guess I should explain, these are actually um, from a reindeer run, so a December winter run from last year. Um, so it was freezing. <laughs> Let me be clear, it was absolutely freezing out. Um, I think I was wearing at least two pairs of pants, at least four shirts and jackets. Um, I had gloves on, I had multiple pairs of socks on. Um, and I will say I did not run the whole thing, um, but it was it was interesting and you got free donuts after, 
for free apples. Um, they had a bunch of different snacks, but of course I went for the donuts. Um, so it was a fun experience and we all did it as a family. So that's just what these pictures are. And as you can see, I'm starting to build out some of my clusters with my different pieces, but I really need to glue everything down before we get too crazy. So I glue down my main pieces here using my ATG gun, but I've also been using my basil adhesive as well every once in a while. And here I need to finalize sort of the structure that I want. I opt to put this guy on some foam because I thought it would help break up the layers a bit because they are a little bit repetitive in general color scheme. And then I also have my Pink Fresh Studio elements at the ready because I have lots of blue ones in there that I wanted to pull in that match the collection I'm using as the background. And then I just start gluing everything down because you're not going to get anywhere if you don't keep gluing. So first layer is sort of this journaling sheet and then I'm going to layer the photos on top of that. Um, what's kind of nice about this is that it's covering up a lot of the photos. I definitely could have cut them more if I was going to layer them like this, but I think even just having them like that, if maybe the glue were to fall off this page or maybe someone wanted to take apart this page someday, um, I think it would be, you know, nice to have that fuller photo effect. Um, but they did end up getting layered more than I expected them to. That's why they're a little bit bigger or more overlapped than, you know, I initially probably thought. So I'm gluing everything down. I've got a snowflake in the bottom right of the photos. I got this little reindeer head um, that I think is so, so pretty. It's glitter and silver, and I added some silver washi tape to help create some sort of diagonal visual pattern. And I put this on some foam as well because the photo is on foam that it's going over. And so far I think it looks relatively similar to what the sketch called for. Um, I did a cluster sort of in the top left and I have one started in the bottom right, which they have some, you know, bursts of color on the sketch here. So I'm excited for how it's turning out, but I definitely have to sift through my stash to find these shades of blues and greens that I've pulled out and that match the mood board as well. So I pull out a couple of these Pink Fresh Studio wooden buttons. I think they're great for adding some texture and some dimension without having to think much about it, but I know a lot of people also don't like the wooden button because it's so thick. I don't mind that. Um, I'm a big, big believer in dimension, um, probably a little bit too much sometimes, but I start sifting through the rest of my Christmas stash supplies and really start looking for those blues because I cannot find them anywhere it seems. I do find this chipboard set again from Pink Fresh Studio. It has the same baby blue color that sort of the background or the mid background paper there that we trimmed earlier. Um, so I definitely pull that in. I thought about using some of these navy corner pieces and then I realized they're gold foil and I'm definitely going for a silver vibe here because it's icy cold outside. But I do keep the blue chipboard and pair it with this snowflake from Echo Park. And I'm really struggling again for a title for embellishments. Um, I end up starting to embellish with these little sparkly stars from Pink Fresh Studio um, Christmas Wishes collection. I just think they're translucent and icy feeling and they just really go well with, you know, the rest of the vibe. I then remember I have silver glitter alphabets, um, but what's really funny is I, since they're kind of falling off the backing here, I am mistaken some of the letters for the wrong letters. Um, so I call this fun run and uh, there aren't enough U's or N's. So what I end up doing is accidentally using an R and then using a V as well for the other letters um, to fill it in. And they kind of disappear on the background. So what I end up doing is pulling out a scrap piece of cardstock from that same kit and using my two inch circle punch to create a base for my title. I originally thought I was going to use pattern paper, but I go with the cardstock instead. Now, I don't realize right now that I have the wrong, wrong letters, because um, I think it looks sort of fine, but at this point it currently reads fur run, because I think the V could easily pass as a U, but the R is really throwing me and I start to glue it down. And it's not until I'm like partially like just looking at it that I'm like, something's wrong here. Um, and I can definitely tell much easily from far away and looking back, of course, but in the moment, sometimes we make silly mistakes and it's okay. Luckily, this was just liquid adhesive. So what I end up doing is switching the R and the V. So there, you know, you can't deny that that's a U because what other letter would be upside down with a curly tail and um, the N, obviously, as long as it's upside down, it can't be another letter. So I think that ends up working well. And I just glue that down, 
and put the title beneath um, sort of the tag emblem as they have on the sketch. And then I want to pull out some of these beautiful Spiegel Mob Scrap sequins. They have this beautiful snowflake piece in them in Winter Wonderland here. Um, and I just love the icy blues and also the clear ones. Clear is definitely something that I think is overlooked a lot in scrapbooking, adding a clear effect to something, whether it be vellum or simply just clear embellishments. I think that they're underrated and can add a lot to mood and feel in terms of iciness or, you know, all sorts of stuff. I mean, there's lots of themes. I just can't think of them. Um, like water droplets, you know, all sorts of fun things. So I put a lot of those down, some darker ones as well, to add a lot of contrast to some of these clusters. But I plan on putting my journaling on this journaling card here that says Winter Memories. And that's pretty much it for this layout. Let me know if you guys think I followed the sketch well. Um, I personally think I struggle with sketches, especially when they're busy like these ones. Um, I'm more of a plain Jane sort of person, so this is definitely not what I have originally envisioned for this layout. But that's what happened, so that's okay. But I hope you guys enjoyed the new technique of me keeping the sketch up in the top right for the layout share. But here are the close-ups guys. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you enjoyed my take on the sketch and mood board and challenge for this month and I hope you check out everyone else um, during the hop. So I'll have the next person linked down below you have to hop over to and there's a lot of great inspiration so I cannot stress it enough that you guys should hop all the way through. But thank you guys so so much for watching. If you did enjoy be sure to give a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already to see more videos by me. But thanks for watching guys!